Sergio went home to wait for word on his offer. There, he told Lucky Boy what happened. Lucky Boy giggled. While he waited for Claire's call, telling him he got the place, Sergio started making sketches of his ideas for it. He'd already drawn plans for the whole first floor when Claire called. You got it, she said when he answered. Great, I need to wrap up a few, uh, few things and then I'll be free for the evening. Can I pick you up? Sergio asked. Sure. They sat a time and Sergio hung up. He looked at Lucky Boy. Where should I take her to dinner? He asked. I want to impress her. You deserve to go where you want. Uh, Lucky Boy said. Oh, sorry, I didn't do the voice. Impress yourself. <laughs> Sergio laughed. You're right. I should impress me for a change. Well, I like that Mexican place downtown. The one with the fountain in the courtyard. I'll take her there. Lucky Boy giggled. Sergio played with his plans for a few more minutes, and then he got ready for dinner, putting on a pair of casual black slacks and a grey and black striped dress shirt. Oh, for goodness sake! Crying child, are you there? <laughs> he grabbed a black leather jacket to finish off the ensemble, and he started towards the door. He's got a nice style, actually. Um, only cringing a little when Thunderfeet started a two-step on his ceiling. When he reached the door, his gaze fell on Lucky Boy, who still sat on the table. Sergio felt bad leaving Lucky Boy home alone. He was giving Sergio all this great advice. Did he deserve to sit around like a knick-knack in an empty apartment? No way. Sergio picked up Lucky Boy, tucked him under his arm, and headed out the door. When Sergio glanced at Mrs. Bailey's closed door before he walked down the hall, Lucky Boy giggled. Mrs. Bailey hadn't bothered Sergio since his ra raisin outburst. He was hoping her hurt feelings, or whatever was keeping her inside her own walls, would hold until he'd moved into his new place. In his lifted truck, Sergio put Lucky Boy in one of the cup holders in the console. When that put Lucky Boy in more of a hole than seemed polite, Sergio dug some paperwork out of the glove box, folded it up, and made a sort of elevated seat for Lucky Boy. Lucky Boy giggled. You might not want to do that when Claire's around, Sergio uh, uh, said starting the engine. Other people's judgments are irrelevant, Lucky Boy said. Sergio glanced at his new friend. You're right, actually. Okay, laugh if you want to. Lucky Boy giggled. Oh god, he's being, like, hypnotised. Um, Sergio pulled out of his parking garage. Do you think I should take her something? Flowers? Too much or not too much? Roses speak from the heart, Lucky Boy said. Okay, roses it is. Sergio stopped by a florist and bought a dozen pink roses. Judging from Claire's bright eyes and big smile when she spotted them on the dashboard, he made a good choice. She looked from the flowers to Sergio. For me? Of course. She reached out for them and then frowned. What's wrong? Are you, are you allergic? No, no, I was just thinking they'll wilt while we're at dinner. Sergio shook his head. I had them put those little vials of water on the edge of each stem. Claire looked at him and smiled wildly. Then she hugged him. You're so thoughtful. Sergio accepted the hug and gave Lucky Boy a thumbs up behind Claire's back. <laughs> as soon as Claire was buckled into her seat, she noticed Lucky Boy. She picked him up. What's this? Sergio tensed, feeling strangely possessive of the little guy. That's Lucky Boy. He's sort of like a mascot. <laughs> Claire gave him a puzzled look. I'm not surprised. Sergio hesitated, then decided to go ahead and tell her the whole story. Before, it had seemed wrong to talk about Lucky Boy, but now it felt disrespectful not to talk about him. Not telling the truth felt like Sergio was taking credit for the re recent turn of events his life had taken. Lucky Boy should have some recognition. Sergio told Claire the whole story. Claire listened with rapt attention, her brows going higher and higher as the story went on. When Sergio was done, she turned Lucky Boy over. How does it work? Sergio shrugged. You're not curious? You don't want to take it apart and find out? She started tugging on Lucky Boy's arms. Sergio grabbed Lucky Boy away from Claire. No! Claire's eyebrows climbed a notch higher. Sorry, Sergio said. I guess I'm sentimental about it. Claire looked from Lucky Boy to Sergio and back. I understand, she said. Sergio didn't think she did. But he didn't say anything else, and by then, they'd arrived at the restaurant. The next few weeks passed in a blur. While Sergio was waiting for the deal to close, he finished his designs. Then he submitted them for approval to the city permit offices while he talked to contractors. He was looking for exactly the right team to work on his project, and it didn't take him long to find it. 
Soon after that, he got approval and the renovation began. Also, Sergio moved into his new place. He wasn't planning on leaving his old apartment before the renovations to his new place were done, but his lease came up for renewal and he'd get a penalty if he left before the end of the year. That made no sense, so he let the lease lapse. He hired movers to pack up his stuff and move everything to the new property. So long, Thunderfeet. So long, Mrs. Bailey. Although the warehouse was a mess, filled with piles of demolished wood, concrete and drywall, a maze of walls stripped to the studs, exposed pipes and wiring, Sergio was able to clear out a corner of it to stack his belongings, store his furniture and set up his bed. He had electricity and one working bathroom, but he had no kitchen. He bought a small fridge for things like milk and sandwich fixings, but mostly he figured he could eat out or te get takeout. It was basically urban camping. Sergio felt like he did when he was a little kid starting a new adventure. What do you think? He asked Licky Bo Lucky Boy, <laughs> Licky Boy, when he sat the toy on top of the pile of boxes near the bed. Sergio did his patented moon moonwalk and spin, and he threw his arms out and up. Isn't this place going to be great? You deserve the best, Lucky Boy said. This will be the best when it's done. Lucky Boy giggled. Sergio once again found himself having long days, but being his own boss, he didn't mind it so much. He was enjoying overseeing his project, until he wasn't, and he was enjoying Claire, until he wasn't. The problem with the project was money. It turned out that he'd underestimated costs. He didn't have a budget big enough to do all that he wanted to do. And if he couldn't do what he wanted to do, he couldn't create an impressive space. If he didn't create an impressive space, he wouldn't be able to use his home as a platform for getting clients. Where can I get more money? Sergio asked. Uh, lucky boy one evening. Rich people have lots of money. <laughs> Sergio wasn't sure what to make of that, but he figured Lucky Boy would make it clear soon enough. Lucky Boy always told him what to do. By now, Sergio was taking Lucky Boy wherever he went. Lucky Boy helped him all day long. He helped Sergio pick out materials, make design decisions, and manage his time. He even helped Sergio choose his food. Lucky Boy also advised him on other purchases, like all the electronics he was buying for the new place and all the casual clothes he was buying to replace his more formal work wardrobe. When Sergio worried about going through his money, L Lucky Boy said, You deserve the best. Lucky Boy had said the same thing to say about Claire. Everything with Claire was, was great at first. She appreciated the places he took her and the flowers and gifts he brought her. But when money got tighter and when he had to stop giving her gifts and start suggesting they stay home for takeout, she began changing. Oh, she still acted sweet and all, but he was sure he could sense an undertone in the things she did. Of course, I don't mind having a picnic on the floor of your place. Sounded like, why do you get off me? Why do you get off making me sit on the floor, cheapskate? It wasn't her words exactly. It was the inflections of her words. And then there were the ways she was trying to improve him. She went about it in a sneaky way. She wouldn't tell him she didn't like his shirts. For example, she just bought him gifts of new shirts. She didn't tell him she hated his taste in music. She just bought him new CDs. It was becoming annoying. And then there were the helpful suggestions. When he was complaining that he wished he was taller, she said, well, you could always have lifts put in your shoes, sweetie. Why couldn't she have been supportive and said, don't be silly, you're plenty tall. He was getting tired of coming up short, literally and figuratively. When Sergio asked Lucky Boy about Claire, he said, You deserve the girl of your dreams. Sergio agreed. He needed to stop wasting his time with women who weren't right for him. There was only one girl for him, and that girl was Sophia. He couldn't have her in high school, but things were different now. Not only did he deserve to have her, but she would be lucky to have him. What? You're so over yourself, oh my god. He was going to have to break up with Claire. Unfortunately, a meet the parents dinner was coming up. His mother had been bugging him to set it up for weeks and the week before she'd called ostensibly to tell him he'd received his third invitation to his 10th high school reunion. But once she had him on the phone, she said, when are we going to get to meet your Claire? You keep putting me off, Sergio. It's not nice to put your mother off. Three weeks ago, you said next week. Two weeks ago, you said next week. A week ago. I get it, Mama. So? So how about this week? He said. Perfect, his mother said. You'll come on a Saturday. Now he wished he hadn't agreed. Should I cancel the dinner? He said. He asked Lucky Boy. Your father is rich, Lucky Boy said. Go get a dinner. Uh, get it alone. <laughs> what? 
Sergio had never asked his dad for money, but Lucky Boy was right. Tony was rich. Why not ask for a loan when he went for the dinner? He'd have to break up with Claire after that. Um, as Sergio suspected, his parents liked Claire on sight. His mother fussed over Claire so much, he said, She's not royalty, Mama. Well, I'm just being friendly, his mother patted her greying black hair, which she had twisted into an elaborate bun. She smoothed the full skirt of her emerald green cocktail dress. His mother liked to get dolled up. Claire fitted, uh, lifted her chin and said, Sergio, don't you know all women wanted to be treated like royalty? Fine, Sergio said. Then I'm going to leave you real ladies here. I need to talk to Papa. Tony had greeted Sergio and Claire and then retreated back into his study. His work wasn't done for the day, but he boomed, Come in, when Sergio knocked on the door. Sergio stepped into his father's domain. As always, he stopped and looked at awe in the space. Tony loved historical architectural details and he'd designed an office filled with so many carved wood features and so many filigree trimmings that it looked like something out of the 16th century. That was so cool. Um, it was a massive office over a thousand square feet and it vaulted two stories lined with bookshelves stud stuffed with books. The room had a rolling ladder for the tall shelves and a spiral staircase to an upper balcony. She surprised, Tony said to Sergio before motioning Sergio onto a plush maroon leather couch by the brick fireplace. Hmm, Sergio said. Tony lowered himself into his recliner. But you're not here to talk about her. What's on your mind, son? I need a loan, Sergio said. He decided to get direct. I thought you won all that money. I've nearly spent all of it. Tony's white, blo uh, bushy white eyes, eyebrows rose, sorry. Papa, you always said... You have to spend money to make money, and that's what I'm doing. I have to create a mind-blowing renovation, something so good that's going to be featured in architectural and design magazines and even the newspaper. I need to create buzz. That's what will give me clients. If you could loan me just a couple hundred thousand, I can create what I want, and then my business will be off and running. I'll pay you back really fast. Tony ran a hand through his curly white hair. He smoothed his moustache, then tapped the side of his long nose, the nose he'd unfortunately handed down to Sergio. Okay, Tony said. I'll loan you the money, but it's a short-term loan. If you can't pay it back in six months, you'll pay it back in labour. Sergio, who had been starting to smile, frowned. What do you mean? You'll have to come drive a truck for me. Sergio stared at his father. Then he shrugged. Why not agree to it? He'd be able to pay back the loan before that could happen. Still, the exchange concerned him. Over dinner, his concerns turned into full-blown annoyance. They had dinner al fresco, sitting at the iron and glass table on the stone patio in the back garden. It would have been a nice meal if Claire hadn't kept sniping at him. Do you want to try some of my roasted Brussels sprouts? She asked him at one point. They're really good. Sergio's mother found the question amusing. Sergio doesn't like Brussels sprouts, Claire dear. He's like his father. They just don't appreciate good vegetables. Tony ignored the comment. Sergio couldn't. It bothered him. Why did Claire get off telling him what he should like? In the car on the way home, Sergio did what he needed to do. Claire was chattering about how lovely his parents' home was. Have you ever thought about designing a big house like that? She asked. Sergio didn't bother to answer the question. He said, I don't want to date you anymore. Claire looked at him. What did you say? You heard me. I don't want to date anymore. All you do is find fault with me. I don't like it. Find fault? How do I find fault? The shirts, the CDs. What? Giving you gifts is finding fault. You told me I should wear lifts. You said you felt short. I was just trying to be helpful. You don't like my taste in vegetables. I was telling you mine tasted good. I don't know why you go out with me if there's so much wrong with me, Sergio complained. Claire crossed her arms and glared at him. You're being ridiculous. Yeah, see? Now you think I'm ridiculous. Claire sighed. You've lost your mind. Riding in the console, as always these days, Lucky Boy giggled. Claire picked up Lucky Boy and shook the toy in Sergio's direction. And you play with dolls? Sergio grabbed for Lucky Boy. Put him down. He turned to look at Claire, and the truck swerved. Claire held Lucky Boy away from Sergio. You've started treating it like a guru, and I was going along with it. But really, Sergio, it's a... Tochka. <laughs> what is that word? It's a doll. It's a little statue. It's, it's not your personal guide through life. If you think it is, you're a weirdo. Claire pressed the button to lower her window. 
You need to get rid of this thing. She raised her arm to toss Lucky Boy out of the truck. Sergio lunged, uh, lunged, lunged for Lucky Boy, and as he did, he wrenched the wheel. They were heading into a curve, and the lifted truck couldn't handle the severe turn. It tipped right over, left the road, and headed down the rocky embankment. Suddenly, they were upside down, then right side up, then upside down. Every flip of the vehicle was accompanied by the screech and crunch of metal against rock. Every jolt threw them around within the confines of their seatbelt, which jerked against their bodies. Thankfully, Sergio was able to grab Lucky Boy away from Claire as the truck started going over so the toy wasn't damaged. The truck landed right side up, but its roof was smashed down toward their heads. Claire started screaming the second the truck stopped moving. Sergio worked as fast as he could to undo a seatbelt and himself. He wanted to get out of the compressed space filled with Claire's hysterical shrieking. He managed to kick his crumpled door open and stumble out. Just as he turned to help Claire, another truck stopped. Are you okay? A middle-aged man called out. Sergio took shock. He'd gotten jostled about, for sure. It felt like he'd pulled a couple muscles and he knew he'd have bruises. But nothing was broken. He looked at Claire. She didn't seem to have anything broken either. He saw no blood. She looked like she was more angry than injured. We're okay, he called out. Speak for yourself, Snap. Claire snapped. You're going to pay for this. I'll go get help, the middle-aged man shout, uh, shouted. Sergio called out. Thanks. The truck was a mess. After it was towed, um, Sergio found out it would need thousands of dollars in bodywork, and it would be in the shop for a couple of weeks. Suddenly, Sergio was without a vehicle again. He was also without a girlfriend, and soon he was facing a lawsuit. Claire was suing him for negligence resulting in her injuries. Because Sergio couldn't get to the suppliers to choose finishes for his veneration, work started slowing down. On top of that, unbeknownst to Sergio, his contractor had had a thing for Claire, and he quit after the accident. I can't in good conscious work for a man who hurts women, the contractor said. That set Sergio's project back a full month, but he wasn't worried. It would all come together. Besides, it was important. He had something far more exciting to think about. The day after Sergio broke up with Claire, he had called his mother to ask if she could get him Sophia's phone number. Before he could ask, though, his mother told him he'd received yet another invitation to his high school reunion. How lucky was that? It would be even better than calling her. He'd meet up with Sophia at the reunion and wow her and the rest of the class too. Hey, Mama, he said. You know Sophia Manchester's mama, right? Sophia, that lovely girl from your class. Yes, we're good friends. Could you find out if she's going to the reunion? His mother let out a little squeal. Oh, my Sergio is so clever. Yes, I can do that. That Claire was a nice girl, but Sophia is much better for you. I agree, Mama. Content that the perfect girl was once more in his sights, Sergio returned his attention to his renovations until he heard from his mother. It didn't take long for her to get back to him. When she called him, he, she was bubbling with enthusiasm. She shouted in his ear, Sergio, she's definitely coming. Sophia will be at the reunion. Sergio hung up the phone, grinning from ear to ear. Not only was he getting the time he needed to catch up on the renovation, but he was also going to get the girl of his dreams. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> the next two and a half weeks passed quickly. Sergio didn't make much progress on the renovation as he wanted, but he wasn't concerned. He finally had his truck back, so things were going to go faster now. You have all the time you need, Lucky Boy told him. He was, however, running out of time to get ready for his reunion. What should I go? What should I do to get ready for the reunion? Sergio asked Lucky Boy after he polished off a burger one evening. I have the right clothes, but I think I should do more. I want to knock Sophia's socks off. What do you think I should do? Um, Sergio was still living pretty much on his bed. The rest of the furniture was stacked up and covered with plastic to keep it free of the paint splatters and dust created by the renovations. He leaned back on his pillow and looked at his little buddy, who now had his own pillow next to Sergio's on his bed. Be the best to get the best, Lucky Boy said. Well, Sergio was the best architect and he was going to have the best business. But what about my looks? Sergio said. I know I'm smart, but smart never counted for much in high school. When I go to the reunion, everyone's going to look at me and see a 10 year old, a ten year older version of who I was then. I want to go back looking different. And I have to admit, I do have some flaws in my appearance. My ears, for instance, they're too big. What should I do about my ears? You don't need them, Lucky Boy said. What does that mean? I don't need my ears. Sergio was confused. You're better off without them. Do you think so? Really? Sergio asked. Get rid of what you don't need. Sergio nodded. That made sense. 
He thought about going to the reunion without his big dopey ears sticking out. That would be so great. But his ears weren't the only issue. I still won't look the way I want to, even without my big ears. I'd really like to look perfect for the reunion. You deserve perfection, Lucky Boy said. Exactly, you're, you're right, I do. Sojo le leaned over to the box he used as a nightstand. He grabbed a pad of paper and a pen. Okay, Lucky Boy, you need to help me here. Let's figure out what I can do to be the best me for the reunion. Let's make a list so I know exactly what I need to do. Make a plan for perfection, Sergio grinned. That's just what I'm going to do. He tapped the paper with a pen. Okay, well, besides my ears, he said, I hate my hair. He scribbled on the paper. Hair is overrated, <laughs> Lucky Boy said. Lucky Boy was right. Hair was a lot, a lot of work. Dale had a shaved head and women found him attractive. Sergio made a note, but then he frowned. He remembered Dale talking about how much work it was to maintain a perfectly shaved head. More work even than keeping hair nice. Shaving wasn't going to do it. His hair would grow back if he didn't go deep. He scratched out his previous note and wrote a new one. He thought for a few seconds. My eyes are too small. I look like a bird. I have beady eyes. What can I do about my eyes? Eyelids cover eyes. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh god, um, good point, Sergio said. He made another note. My nose is too long. Cut to fit, that's the rule, Lucky Boy said. Sergio nodded. Of course, when wood was too long, you trimmed off the end. He wrote on the pad. My lips are too thick, Sergio said. They look like a girl's lips. Wood carvers are artists, Lucky Boy said. Another good point, Sergio said. Why hadn't he thought of that? He was a master of reshaping wood. He was sure he could reshape anything. He scribbled another note. Then he said, I want to be taller. Remove and reuse, Lucky Boy said. Sojo smiled. Right. He, took, he often took scrap material from one part of a project and repurposed it for another part. He made a note. Then he wondered, what should I do about my belly? Leaner is meaner, Lucky Boy said. Trim the fat. Oh my god. Uh, this, is, this is getting dark <laughs> quickly. Uh, Sojo nodded and wrote on his list. He smiled warmly at Lucky Boy. You're a great help. I'm so glad I found you. <laughs> Lucky Boy giggled. Sojo sat and wrote for a bit longer, and then he stood. Okay, time to get to work. Sojo crossed to his stacks of boxes and moved them around until he found the one he wanted. Tearing off the tape, he reached in and pulled out his kitchen knife set. He put it on the bed. Setting the first box aside, he examined the surrounding boxes until he found the next one he wanted. He ripped the tape from that box and pulled out a pair of scissors, needles and, a th and thread, a measuring tape and some twine. He laid all of these items out on the bed. He stepped into the makeshift bathroom area and got his razor. He added that to what he'd already gathered. Then he left his little carved out living space and walked out into the unfinished great room. I should have left. I should have the rest of what I need out here. He looked around. He spotted a box cutter on what was going to become the kitchen island, and then he picked it up. Then he looked around again. His gaze landed on his drill. That would come in handy. Now where had he put his wood carving knives? He had a whole set of them. They were extra sharp for exact contouring. Ah, there they were. He found them tucked behind his router. Pondering it for a moment, he picked it up too, and he grabbed the set of bits that went with it. He surveyed the space again. He needed one more thing. He saw what he was looking for on the far side of the room. He crossed over, picked up a handsaw, and returned to his living area. He added his new tools to the collection on the bed. He looked at Lucky Boy. What do you think? Do I have everything? The right tools for the right jobs. Sergio felt a rush of excitement. This was going to be awesome. He was finally going to fix himself up so he'd be as eye-catching as he was successful. Sergio did a moonwalk along the foot of his bed. He spun in a circle and looked at his assembled tools. Where to begin? Sojo's class reunion was being held in the grand ballroom of the oldest hotel in town. He was excited about that because the ballroom was uh, impressive. With gilded ornate ceilings and carved panel walls filled with crystal chandeliers and fine artwork, the room was exactly the kind of room that would make a great backdrop for Sergio's new and impressive look. He was going to drop some jaws this evening, that was for sure. He decided to arrive late so he had the biggest audience possible for his grand entrance. Thankful to have his big truck, uh, truck to get him to the festivities, Sergio drove up to the hotel in gleeful anticipation. This is going to be so much fun. 
Inside the hotel, most of Sergio's classmates were already in full party mode. Squealed greetings, warm hugs and fond laughter joined in with 80s rock hits played by a raucous band. Even though the room was already fancy, the reunion planners had topped off the room with streamers and a big Welcome Class of 85 banner that hung high on the wall. Now hang on a second. Hang on. So Class of 85. So I'm, assu so I'm assuming they were in class in 1985. So this must take place. I don't know how long after. Like, oh no, he's the youngest he was the youngest, like, senior architect or whatever. So this must be, like, mid-90s, right? Or early 2000? No, it must be, like, nine. it must be, like, 1995 <laughs> rather than 85. Yeah, I I'd assume it's, like, 10 years later. So this must all take place in, like, end of 1990s or something, um, which is very interesting. Um, there's a big welcome class of 85 banner that hung high on the wall. Reunion attendees talked and joked and danced under a floating cloud of helium balloons. When the ballroom doors opened to let in the latest arrival, all eyes turned to see who was coming in now. In unison, all those eyes widened in horror. The music stopped playing with the screech of a discordant guitar chord and the reverberating clash of a cymbal. Talking ceased entirely. The entire room went completely silent. Then a woman screamed, and another, and another. One woman fainted. Someone threw up. Several people covered their mouths. Several more turned away. Some started running toward the back of the room. Not sure what was causing the upset, Sergio looked behind him to see if something terrible was coming. He saw nothing. A man and a woman were at the far end of the hall, but they were headed the other way. A waiter was coming out of another ballroom, but he too was going in the other direction. No one was behind Sergio. As Sergio started to turn back toward his classmates, his gaze landed on the floor. He dr he drowned? He frowned. The floor was disgusting. What had happened in this hallway? Sergio hadn't noticed the floor when he walked in, because uh, probably because he was so eager to make his captivating appearance, but now he stared at it. The gold carpet behind him was stained with a thick trail of blood. No, not just blood. White bits of flesh nestled in the blood. He also saw what looked like bone bits, clumps of hair and blobs of what appeared to be pink spongy tissue dropped at intervals along the centre of the hallway. The blobs gleamed in the glow from the overhead chandeliers and seemed to wiggle as he looked at them. It was nauseating. Sergio was appalled. He thought this was supposed to be the classy hotel. Someone should do something about the mess, but if he went to get a hotel employee now, he'd mess up his timing. A, a car alarm is going off. <laughs> what good timing. Uh, his classmates were waiting for him. Sergio looked back down the hall to where he'd left Lucky Boy sitting on a chair so he could watch Sergio's triumph. So Lucky Boy would agree that Sergio deserved to have the best cleaners take care of this mess. Lucky Boy giggled. Sergio looked down at his feet and noticed even more gruesome waste staining the carpet next to his brand new shoes. Oh, for heaven's sake. Some of the gore had even gotten on the black leather. He leaned over and wiped off what looked to be some rubbery gristle. He shook his head. He would deal with the hotel's janitorial shortcomings later. He turned back to his fellow, fellow classmates. Now, he said to himself, where is Sophia? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's gruesome. <laughs> that's gru- I, I did not see that coming until, um, until Lucky Boy was like, hey, you shouldn't have ears if they're so big, you know. I, I knew what was coming as soon as that came up. It was basically, hmm, it was kind of like a copy of To Be Beautiful, but it it was him doing it to himself and it wasn't metal. It was just him. And it was kind of like, it was kind of like a combination of In The Flesh and To Be Beautiful and uh, no, yeah, no, that kind of, yeah. I'm kind of not as well. There's There's a lot of originality with this story. And I actually really enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed that story. It took a while to um, to get to the good bit. Uh, I mean, the good bit was like the last 10 minutes, but it was it was all pretty good. Uh, it was a very nice, um, gruesome story. Uh, I am going to have nightmares for a few days now. Um, but yeah, um, tell me guys if you enjoyed this story too. Uh, also, any theories you have about this? I don't know what this represents. Could it represent anything in, in the in the FNAF games? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. 
but yeah, that that is that is the interesting thing when this takes place. I, I, my guess is like nineteen ninety five, like mid mid nineties. Um, but yeah, the next story we are going to be reading is the last one of this book. It is a lot longer actually. It'll probably be um, like an extra half an hour longer, and it's called What We Found, which uh, <laughs> I I can't wait. I cannot wait for this. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.